Welcome to the Backyard Professor videos. I'm going to uh, I'm going to shift gears once again. I'm going to do a series on geometry. Nature teaches us a lot about geometry. And geometry teaches us a lot about nature. It's a fascinating thing to see how geometry teaches us about the nature of reality. I want to talk about geometry. We Freemasons, we emphasize geometry because there's a subtle reality that geometry teaches us about, and we get it from nature. I want to talk about geometry. I want to share some of the themes and the ideas of geometry and how it expands our horizons into seeing a new and subtle reality that only math can teach us. There's something significant going on in the world. With geometry, we're taught we can learn the postulates, theorems, hypotheses, proofs, only in geometry and math. And because of this, we can find a basis for meaning in life. When we study geometry, we can actually see very interesting laws based on number, just exactly like the Pythagoreans taught. They taught all is number, or all is hooked with number. Just like this ash layer, probably laid down quite a few million years ago. It's the same ash layer that we have probably, or, or a similar one, that we have over at uh, the High Sea Hot Springs here, about 30 miles away from here. But I want to talk about some principles of geometry that give us a philosophical, symbolical, theological, and mathematical basis for understanding the laws of the universe. It's an utterly exquisite study. As Freemasons, we are taught to really emphasize, study, and learn geometry. And there's reasons for this. Truth is in geometry. And geometry can teach us truth. So I want to go through and show you some ideas on numbers and geometry and philosophy itself that are really exquisite. Not the mundane, typical, regular, everyday, boring, rote memorization junk that we do in our schools and torture our kids with. No. Geometry can be one of the most exciting and subtle fields of study on the planet. I believe the Freemasons have it right. The study of geometry is seriously significant for understanding our basis of reality. And this extended into the architecture, as well as into the purposeful adaptation of geometrical truths into the soul. We Mormons have also done this with the architecture and the themes. Nature teaches us so much about geometry. And geometry teaches us so much about nature. It's fascinating to see the geometry of nature. To see the subtleties of the figures of the creation. The ancients knew that by the study of nature, they could study reality. There are certain principles, laws, themes, recurring patterns, ideas, subtle philosophical discussions and, and uh, points of view that they could understand truth and reality through nature and through number and through geometry. It's so fascinating when we recognize this. When we recognize everything in nature 
everything in nature is geometric. Geometry, of course, comes from ancient Egypt, where they measured the earth when the Nile would flood. It would wipe out their property boundary markers. So they had to re-measure the earth. And that's where the theme of geometry came from. Geo is earth, of course, and meter to meter to metric is to measure. And all things have geometric shape. Everything. From ones, twos, threes, fours, fives, sixes, sevens, eights, nines, and tens, the study of nature, with its absolutely breathtaking, infinite variety, teaches us about reality. We can tap into the same laws with our concepts of number. The principles of the point, the line, the plane, the circle, the square, the triangle, it's all here. And I want to start with the point. I want to start with the theme of the geometric point. If you haven't looked into it, it will probably really stun you how much there is to the point. Just the simple geometric point and what the ancients called the monad. Beginning with one. The ancients didn't have the concept of zero. That's a late comer on the field. Zero is late. They began counting properly with one. The monad. The first. The beginning. It's extremely interesting how they describe this point and the significance of it symbolically. Whether you like him or not, Carl Jung was right when he noted that we are a symbolic species. So let's explore some numbers, some geometrical points, themes, lines, planes, solids, figure it numbers. Let's see what it has to teach us. Now, the proper way to begin studying the simple point in geometry is with one of these, the compass. And you say, yeah, yeah, shirts, sure, it's, it's a compass. You open up the compass and it makes circles. So you make circles. Big deal. We already know all that. That's one way to approach it. But there's a better way. A more spiritual way. <laughs> and I can hear the protests. Oh no. Backyard professor's going to religionize our science and our mathematics and all that. No, the backyard professor is not going to do that. The backyard professor is going to teach you how the ancients understood things. And it's a much more broad, full, and complete study and analysis because they incorporated all of the seven liberal arts together to make the whole man. Not, not secularize it and not completely make it religious. But they were far closer to nature than we ever have been. And we're missing out. We are poverty. Because all we use number for, all we use these things for, is to hurry up and get through class so that we can get an A, so that we can move on to our business management courses, and our money market studies, and so that we can use numbers to keep track of our money and finances. And that's the only thing numbers are good for in our world, is because we're worried about our blue chips. And it's completely wiped out our intellect. And it's dampered our spirits. And this rush about, hurry up world has completely wiped out our psyches. We're out of tune. I believe a proper study of geometry with the compass, the straight edge, the square, the 24 inch gauge can teach us some important lessons about ourselves 